So I've got here one of this year's babies. This is a Northern Death Adder, and they really are one of my favorite snakes. They're quite easy to identify with a fairly distinct body, a distinct head, separate to the body, so there's a little neck there and there's a head. And they've got this fantastic little lure of a tail. So see how the tail tapers off there? They'll basically sit in a horseshoe shape and they'll use that tail to lure in prey. You can find them in most parts of Australia, but they really are dependent on leaf litter. So anywhere where there's natural ground covers, uh, you can find death adders. They have the fastest strike of any snake in Australia and a very powerful neurotoxic venom. So they cause uh, fairly complete paralysis uh, if somebody's bitten by one. And they've got long fangs for their size. Now I'll just show you defensively, is he gonna stay put? Defensively they'll flatten out. And this is where people often mistake them for lizards. So when you've got, if you've got a blue tongue lizard in a leaf litter, you mightn't even see its legs, you just see the top part of the body. And it, depending on how you're thinking, it could either look like a death adder or it could look like a blue tongue. And about half of death adder bites uh, are the result of mistaken identity. People uh, thinking they've got a lizard when they've actually come across a death adder. So if you're wondering if death adders are gonna be found in your locality, if you back on the natural bushland, bushland if you've got sandstone, uh, even if you've got uh, vegetation along coastal strips, wherever they find natural ground covers, you may find them. That doesn't mean they're gonna turn up in your manicured garden bed. They need some, um, you know, some proper bushland. But if you've got cows, if you've got agriculture, if you've got uh, heavy urbanization, you probably won't find death adders. Now, although their venom may be highly toxic, as, as I said, a powerful neurotoxin, uh, the anti-venoms we have available today are very effective on death adders, and people can be completely paralyzed, you know, unable to breathe on their own. They receive the anti-venom and they make a complete and full recovery and quite rapidly too. So the venoms are fairly pure and don't carry some of the complications that you may get from other snakes like brown snakes, tiger snakes, taipans. And uh, just check out this flattening effect. Is it gonna work? We'll just hold him up there. Whoop, and there he gave a little strike. Uh, if you caught that, it was faster than the blink of the eye and there's a little bit of venom just uh, pulled up on the end of the snake hook there. All right, mate, I'll put you back in your little transport box. And I've got some I've got some kitty litter in here, so it actually just replicates the leaf litter and gives the adder something to hide down and feel secure. It's very important with, with captive snakes that they feel secure, otherwise they won't eat. Up we go, up, and in. And if we show, those just make amazing shapes, amazing defensive shapes. So look, it's. It's related to cobras. It's a, it's a cobra-like behavior, which you would call hooding. This sort of spreading of their ribs to increase their size. And there's only two reasons a snake would do that. One, either it's trying to increase its surface area to heat up, or in this case, it's giving a, a very impressive defensive display. So frogs and lizards and mice and things will find that lure there quite irresistible when they're feeding. So they're a classic ambush predator. Set themselves up at the base of a tussock, uh, a rock ledge, a shrub, bury themselves down in the leaf litter, put the tail just in front of their chin, and when a prey item comes along, just flick and vibrate that tail, lure it in, then they hit it with a super fast strike. 